Let's talk about metabolism for a minute, or 10. We've all heard it. Move more, burn more. Food goes in, energy comes out, and what you don't use gets stored as fat to burn off later. Simple, right? But if you've ever tried to lose weight and thought, why isn't this working? This video is for you. You are not alone in following all the rules and not seeing the results. Let me share a personal story. I was never really overweight, but when my father passed away, I noticed a bit of something creeping on. It wasn't much, about three kilograms, but just enough to make all my pants uncomfortably tight. I didn't like it, this new version of me just wasn't suiting me, and I wasn't about to run out and buy new jeans. So I did what we all think we should do. I exercised more and I ate less, and guess what? It didn't work. Not even a bit. I was confused. How could it be this hard? Then I got sick. I couldn't eat for a few days and then, boom, the extra weight was just gone. That's when I realized there is more going on with metabolism than we think. And that if there is a link between exercise and weight loss, it is more tenuous than we are generally led to believe. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Pavel, an anthropologist with zero fitness credentials who got fit after 40, and today I'm committing heresy against the metabolism dogma. So why does it feel like your body is sabotaging your best efforts? If things are supposed to be so simple, why is it so hard? It's because move more, burn more dogma is wrong. Just plain wrong. Your daily activity level has very little impact on how many calories you actually burn each day. We've all heard that if you eat more calories than you burn, your body stores the excess as fat, and that a kilogram, which is about two pounds of fat, equals roughly 7,000 calories. So, theoretically, to lose weight you just need to burn more than you eat and that fat gets converted back into energy. This misconception has a backstory. It started in the post-World War II efforts by the UN to estimate the caloric needs of populations using basal metabolic rate measurements and activity cost tables. For example, an hour of walking burns about 260 calories, swimming about 430, biking 600 and running approximately 700. The shiniest newest gadgets and apps use these ancient tables to do the calories burned calculations. Yeah, so don't feel bad for believing this. It's what doctors are taught in medical schools everywhere and it's the backbone of most exercise programs. By the way, do you know the difference between calories and calories? 1000 calories is a calorie. The hell is wrong with you, Americans? What did the metric system ever do to you? So, which calories was I just talking about? Well, calories, of course. Or kilocalories. So how do we know now that it's all bullshit? Well, the new research is in. It uses something called the double labeled water to track energy expenditure, and it's more reliable than the old methods. Instead of strapping someone to a treadmill in a lab or having them walk around with a balloon on their head all day, the participants simply drank water where both the hydrogen and oxygen atoms were replaced with heavier isotopes, hence doubly labeled. Totally harmless, by the way, just in case you got the image of the Chernobyl nuclear reactor in your head for some reason. Once it's in the body, the hydrogen isotopes are excreted through water, urine, and the oxygen isotopes leave through water and carbon dioxide. By measuring how fast these isotopes disappear from the body, researchers can calculate total energy expenditure, including the calories you burn just to stay alive, your basal metabolic rate, and everything else that you do. This is a major game changer because it allows us to measure the calories people burn in their actual lives, not just in a lab over days and weeks. And guess what? Whether you run a marathon or sit on a couch all day, your body adjusts its total energy burn to keep things within a pretty tight range. That's why ramping up exercise doesn't translate into more calories burned, and weight loss is much harder than eat less, exercise more mantra. By the way, if you like this type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you know how to use that new hype feature, which is available for the videos less than seven days old, because it will really help with the great YouTube algorithm. And if you feel you just love this channel in a way that opens up your wallet, you can now buy me a coffee. Link in the description below. 
Studies have shown that people in active hunter-gatherer societies like the Hadza in Tanzania burn roughly the same number of calories per day, adjusted for size, as individuals in industrialized societies, despite getting more exercise in a day than an average American or European does in a week. The body operates within a fixed calorie budget and adapts to conserve energy, making fat loss through exercise challenging in the long run. In the words of Hermann Ponzer, the author of Burn, How New Research Blows the Lid of How We Really Burn Calories, Lose Weight, and Stay Healthy. Our metabolic engines were not crafted by millions of years of evolution to guarantee a beach-ready bikini body, but rather to pack on more fat than any other ape. Sorry, everyone. And I hate giving good people bad news. We tend to think of our bodies as cars, fuel in, movement out. But our bodies are not cars, they are complex systems designed by millions of years of evolution to do hundreds of things at once, just to keep us alive. It's not just about moving your muscles. You need energy for your brain to think, for your gut to digest, for your kidneys to filter your blood, for your immune system to keep you healthy, and on and on and on the list goes. So it's really no wonder that exercise is only a small puzzle of the overall energy expenditure. And this is where Hermann Ponce's research comes in. He studied the Hadza, the hunter-gatherer tribe in Tanzania, and the findings were shocking because how could it be that whether you are sitting behind a desk or running after food all day, your body burns roughly the same number of calories? What on earth is going on? If you exercise more, your body doesn't just start burning more calories. To clarify, your body burns more calories on movement but it shifts the energy away from other functions, like immune response or digestion, so the overall calorie burn remains the same. So you might be thinking, if it doesn't help me lose weight, then why bother? This is so difficult to explain! Oh my god! Oh my god, what did I get myself into? Stress and energy management, or should we say mismanagement, and cortisol are a whole different bunch of topics. But let me just say briefly that when you're stressed, your body releases cortisol to keep you on high alert after the initial threat. And cortisol triggers the release of glucose from your liver for quick energy. That's great if you're running away from a predator, but not so much when this stress comes from work, finances, and everyday life. Prolonged presence of cortisol tells your body to hold on to fat, especially dangerous visceral fat, around your organs. It's a survival mechanism, but completely maladaptive for the 21st century life. And that's not all! Cortisol also messes with your immune system and cognitive functions, so you shouldn't give your body this extra energy to fuel this state of alert. So sure, exercise is not the silver bullet for weight loss, but you should still do it, because it will redirect energy away from self-destructive systems like chronic inflammation and visceral fat storage. You see, your body in the modern tech lingo is what's known as a legacy design. It was meant to get you to survive in a different era and in a different environment. It was supposed to move a lot, hunting for animals and gathering plants. It was not made to how you're using it now, sitting for hours in front of the computer. Another compelling reason, even if you eat the exact same diet, exercise cuts the amount of fat circulating in your blood by nearly half. The phrase, you can eat anything you like as long as you exercise, takes on a whole new meaning in terms of the blood work and overall health. That clip came from a BBC documentary, The Truth About Exercise. Watch it if you have a chance, it's quite good. Oh man, we've got to make a video about sitting, it's the new smoking, and how to get you off these chairs another time. And this legacy design needs movement. When you're not moving, you're doing yourself a disservice. Now, let me suggest another metaphor. Your body is not like a car, but a bureaucracy, and calories are the currency. If you don't overeat and stick to just the amount of calories your body requires, and you exercise, you will prevent your body from blowing its resources on stupid stuff. 
you might think, ah, if exercise doesn't work, I'll just eat less. Unfortunately, your body's bureaucracy is run by a dodgy mafia accountant. He's constantly balancing the energy books to cheat you of your weight loss goals, whether you eat or not. He's remarkably good at reallocating resources to preserve its energy budget. This means that if you cut calorie intake, the body compensates by reducing energy expenditures. Over time, it might slow down functions like your immune system, reproductive health, and even brain function to conserve energy. This explains why losing weight by simply eating less is so tough. There are strategies to prevent your body from entering this starvation mode, but that's a topic onto itself. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to cover it one day. By the way, these pie charts are based on my understanding of Hermann Ponce's constrained energy model, so mm, don't let him see them, because I'm not sure if he's on board with my budgeting skills. A simple takeaway for now is eat well, move often, and aim for a daily routine where the energy you consume matches what you burn. And for a deeper dive into the science of how our bodies manage energy, check out Burn. New research blows the lid of how we really burn calories, lose weight, and stay healthy by Herman Ponser. Well, that's it from me today. Thank you for watching, and I see you next time. Bye.